everybody. I'm Katrina, the owner of Katheme Creations, Recent Things, and we are back in my basement, in my workspace, and today we're going to be working on a wreath. Now, I wanted to do another wreath, a wreath that I had done with you guys already because I got a lot of good reviews on it. Several people wanted to see me do more wreaths like this, so what we're going to do today is a grapevine, a full grapevine wreath. This wreath is relatively easy. It is not the cheapest wreath to make. But it is relatively easy okay so i like this reef because of that because it is easy it doesn't have a lot of steps um and it doesn't have a lot of parts to it it's simple so this is what i mean what i have in front of me here is you can have one ribbon two ribbon three ribbon four ribbon how many ribbons you want but today we're using four different ribbons and these are the ribbons that we're making and the, it'll make sense once i show you the sign see the ribbons here now check out this sign today i picked up this sign at my wholesaler's place which is reeves which is in woodstock georgia uh, they finally open on saturdays for their holiday season so this wreath right here is i mean this sign right here is what i picked up today i love that i love the colors it says hey there pumpkin i just think it is so so cute so i picked up this sign and as you can see now the the ribbon colors definitely make sense right so these ribbon colors with the sign definitely make sense right so yeah so that's why we got those ribbon colors that's what we're using today we're using four ribbons like i said you can use two you can use one you can use three as many ribbons as you want to go with your sign it all depends on which what kind of reef you're making right so that's my sign then while we was in reeves we found these picks now it's twisted because i have it sitting on the grapevine and i'll explain to you why i did that now when you look at these picks check out these picks i got two of them and they're gonna go like this around the wreath and you'll see why i picked them out because now look at that that goes perfect absolutely perfect with that sign right great colors great large pumpkins and all the decorative stuff that go on it, right? It matches the sign perfectly. So you get two picks, you get a sign, you get two picks. I also brought this too as a filler if I want to use it as a filler. So I bought this as well. But hey, you guys, before we get any deeper, let me know who you are. Let me know where you're checking in from. Say hi to me. Let me know if you made a great vine read before. Let me look over here and see who's chiming in on Facebook. I haven't pulled you guys up yet. So if you hear any noise in the background, that's my daughter, my grandson. Um, my daughter's actually packing up my car. We are heading, we have a, a vendor event, last minute vendor event that came up this week. I just got confirmation yesterday that they will allow me to set up a booth tomorrow. So yes, this is last minute. Um, <laughs> We're going to get this done. We're, it is last minute. I can't pull you guys up on Facebook. I don't see you yet on Facebook. Um, not sure why, but I don't see you guys here on Facebook. Let's see if you guys. But I should be live. But anyway, so once you get your pick, you get your sign, you get your picks, you pick out what type of style of grape of 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 wreath frame you're going to use today we're using the grapevine okay so you can go to the store now they have these grapevines at walmart they have them at hobby lobby michael's joann's online so you can find grapevines in different sizes any of the craft places so they're not very hard to find i buy mine at my wholesaler so that's where i get mine at and when you get your grapevine this one is a little rough because i haven't cleaned it and i wanted to show you guys you see i just got all the things sticking out and the grapevines are not supposed to be perfect so it's supposed to be a little rustic but then you got all these little extra pieces just um hanging around so what i do with that is i just take my wire cutter and i start snipping off little ends just to clean it up just a little bit just a little bit just a little bit i just clean it up just a little bit so I'm doing that. I look around my reef to clean up some little parts here. And this is this is when it's just a little messy, you know, because you're just cleaning up your grapevine. 
And what I do is when I have my grapevine, I think that's good enough. Like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect because grapevine is supposed to be rustic. You find the flattest side of your wreath. And that's the side you want to be working on, right? So you put it on your table. That fits kind of flat. You flip it over. That fits kind of flat. So either way really would work. I like this side because my sign is going to go here. It's a little bit more full here. Or maybe I'll have my sign go here. Both of them are really, really good. It's kind of hard to pick a side. I think I'm going to go with that. I like this. You you pick whichever looks good, but you want to make sure the side that's going to be against the door, the window, the wall, wherever this is going to be hung at, is flat or, or the most flat part of the, of the of the wreath. You don't want to have it on the side that's not going to lay as flat to the wall. So you're going to make sure you're doing it with the flat side down, right? I see some more little pieces. Like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. But just a little bit of the pieces you clean off. You can also bang them on the floor just a little bit like this and just try to get some of the loose debris um, off. And then I just take my, I just clean off my table. This is a messy wreath, okay? When you do grapevines, it's messy. You're going to have twigs and you're going to have little pieces all over the place. Like I said, if you hear noise in the background, that's my grandson. Um, he know I'm making videos, so he wants to be loud. So that's how that is. So here we are. So now we have our grapevine. This is what makes this wreath so easy because you just have the grapevine, your two picks, and a sign, and ribbon. That's all you need for this. Pretty easy, right? Not a whole bunch of stuff. Not too too complicated. That's why I said this is an easy wreath. It may not be as cheap, but it is easy. Now, nice, nice picks like this in Hobby Lobby, Michael's or Joann's, um, normally would cost, hold on one second, what's wrong? Okay. Um, these would cost maybe $15.99, $16.99, you know, maybe $14.99, but they normally would run like maybe $16.99, right? Um, so that's like $17 a piece. So, you know, that's $35, you know, or, you know, you know, $24, not $35, it's $24, you know, whatever the, the price may be, right? So it's $24, you're paying for this, you know, you, you know, but it's not cheap, you know, it's not going to be where it's going to be $10, right? You're getting up to $20 and $30 just for picks. You know, if you find a nice sign, a lot of signs are, if you want a really nice sign, they can go from eight, nine, ten, twelve, fourteen dollars. Now they do have nice signs in the Dollar Tree, so you can go to the Dollar Tree and get some really nice signs. Walmart have them. Sometimes they're six ninety nine, seven ninety nine, four ninety nine. So it's not too pricey, you know. So, but that's what I mean when I say, you know, this wreath is not as cheap, but it is easy. Now, how are we going to get this sign ready? Because that's what we do first um, when we're doing this uh, type of wreath, is we get the sign ready. We place the sign where we want it on the wreath. Now, I want it where this side of the wreath is flushed to the grapevine. And the bottom side of the sign is also flush with the grapevine. And then, you know, this is where the grapevine is actually touching the sign. So what I actually do is I flip it over and I take a marker and I mark like right in the middle here, right in the middle here and right in the middle here. And when I do that, I've already done it. So, and when I do that, I have these marks here. When I have these marks here, Matter of fact, I'm going to cut off this. We don't need this. So we can cut that off. With these marks, I take my cable ties, which is this, these things right here. These are called cable ties, right? They're called cable ties. And they have a, where you pull off a little sticky part and it sticks to the back of your uh, reef design. Okay? So I take my cable ties. 
And normally I use it with uh, E6000 glue, but I'm just going to use it with my hot glue tonight. So let's just try to make sure we got most of the sand and stuff off the back of the sign. Because working with this grapevine, it is real dirty. So I'm going to place this here. And we're going to hit uh, all three of these with some hot glue. We're just going to place them where it said they need to be placed. And now that we have them placed, we take the hot glue. And this is my cordless hot glue gun, and I love it. If you watch my videos, I use it in all my videos. This is a Shore Bonda hot glue, cordless hot glue gun, and I love it. It started leaking recently, but I still love it. I'm not getting rid of it. I love it. And what I mean by leaking is like when it's sitting, warming up, some glue will start coming out of it, which I don't think is, is too bad of a problem. It has like a little holy thing. I put some tissue there. It's fine. So you put a good amount of glue, at least I do anyway. Put a good amount, make sure it makes contact with it. Also normally I would take some E6000 glue, the E6000 glue, and I would just put a little dab on the sticky part and then press that down and then uh, hot glue it. I just don't feel the need to do that today. I'm kind of in a rush, really, to tell you the truth, I'm trying to get some reefs done. Let me see if I can pull you guys up again. Hey, let me see. Let me see. I hate the fact that I can't see your comments. So let me see if I can pull you guys up. I don't see you. I don't know why. I can't see it on Facebook. Y'all give me a second. Let me see. I'm not seeing my live. Okay, yes, I'm seeing my live now. Yes, thank you. So at first I couldn't see it. I was like, what is going on? Why can't I see my live? Okay. Hey, hey, hey. Now I can see you guys. Let me take, let me send the volume down. Okay. Hey, I don't think we're going to use the table the last time we didn't use the table. Remember? We didn't take the table last time, didn't we? Did we? We took the table? Then the table's right there up against the wall. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I said, we are doing a vendor, vendor event, a last minute vendor event at Bridge Mill Subdivision in Canton, Georgia. The address is 1200 Bridge Mill Avenue in Canton, Georgia, and it's from 12 to 6. It is the um, fall festival, so if you guys want to come out, I will have my reefs there. I'm going to be a pretty late because I'm going to try to do a garland. I'm going to try to. Uh, but it's already pretty late, so I don't know if I'm going to get a chance to do that. This was like a last-minute pop-up event, so I wasn't really prepared for it. So I'm just trying to make some reefs for you guys uh, um, for video and also to sell for the event. So we're going to be at the vendor event. We're going to be at the Fall Festival at Bridge Mill Subdivision, which is 1200 Bridge Mill Avenue in Canton, Georgia, tomorrow between 12 and 6 p.m. You guys come out. Check us out. Once you glue down your um, ties, we want some brown Chanel stems, which I have right here. And I'm just going to stick this through. And normally I wait for it to dry a little bit. It's dried enough. And I just stick it through. A lot of times I put it in already before I glue it. And I just give it a one-two twist. That's all. One-two twist once you put it in. Let me make sure it's kind of even. Give it a one-two twist. Come all in. And this sign is ready to be attached to the grapevine. What we do, because the glue is already setting up, we place this back down, put it back where we want it on the grapevine. And that's how I do mine, is I actually put one edge of the sign to the edge of the grapevine, the edge of the grapevine, and then the bottom of the sun I bring to the bottom of the grapevine. 
And this is just me. It's not something that you have to do. I like it to line up on the sides. That's just me. Uh, it sticks out a little bit here on the bottom, but I do like it where it lines up on the side. I don't like it when it's all the way in, like here, like when I'm putting it in, you can see the side of the grapevine. I don't like that. So I like to cover the side. So I go all the way to the side and all the way to the bottom where the sign covers the grapevine. And then what I do is I have what they call, it's, it's a, a plastic needle. I don't know if you guys can see that. Can you see that? It's a plastic needle, right? Has a little hole at the top right in here. And I stick my Chanel stems through that hole and stick it through my grapevine to help me get the Chanel, th Chanel stem through the grapevine so I can twist it to the back. So this is a good thing to buy. Very good thing to buy because it makes it so easy for you to get your Chanel stems through the grapevine. No problem whatsoever. When I didn't have it, you know, you had to fish through and try to stick your fingers through and try to get it through, but it always would twist and go a different way. But when you have this, it's absolutely not a problem. So I'm going to just put it through the hole, give it a little bend so it'll stay attached and find a little spot in the grapevine. And that's what I'm going through. And it goes straight down. And I don't want to pull too tight. I just want it to go down for right now. And the spot I want it in. And I'm doing, I'm not going to twist it down yet because I want to make sure that's where I want it. In this middle, same thing with the middle. You take it and you just stick the Chanel stem through that little hole, that little needle hole. I'm putting it back here. So I'm going to make sure this is the area where I want it. Right in here. And sometimes it gets a little tricky with placement, but just take your time. No need to rush. Take your time. All right, let me see what you guys are talking about. I got the volume up so I can't see you guys. Hey, Jacqueline. Good evening, girl. Hi, Miss Gales. How are you? Have you made a great bond reef before? Uh oh, we missed some of the pieces, some of the Chanel stem. Let's see what we got so far. It's covered in the back. Okay, there you go. Now we just gotta make sure it's covering this part. I like it to come out a little bit over the end. So we want it right there. Like I said, it's just placement. That's all it is. It's just placement here. And then a little bit here on this side, and then we want some of this side. Like I said, we haven't tied anything. We're just sticking it through, and you just you you stick it at one on one side of some a group of grapevines, and you stick it on the other. That's 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 all that is. I may have to move this one down some. Yeah, I think that's good. See, the placement is where you want it. And right now I'm just pulling down on the Chanel stems to make sure I have placement where I want it. And that is where I want it. Because if I have it come up some more to show. So I, I got to clean my, uh oh, got to clean this because it's just, ugh, breaking up all over the place. And just know they'll do that. Ravons will do that. So then I flip it over and I just take the two end pieces and I securely twist it to the back of the grapevine. And I give it a couple of good twists because then I'm going to break it off and I'm going to stick it back into the back of the grapevine. Okay. And then when you're on the back too, you can also see placement as well because you'll see that my edges are lined up with the grapevine and that's what I want it. You can tell from the back really well that it's lined up with the grapevine. And this is what I do. I just give it a couple of good twists. And then I just cut it off. 
and then I stick it back down into the back of the grapevine. This one has to be twisted a little more because I need a little bit more sticking out so I can twist it in to the back of the grapevine. And if you find a spot and you just twist it back in there. I cover the back of my grapevines with felt. You don't have to do this, but I do do it. I just like that little extra step. I don't want a, a reef that I make the vine, the grapevine to scratch somebody's wall, window, or door, wherever they're going to hang it at. So I just go to extra step and I cover the back with felt. Like I said, you do not have to do that. Um, that's just something I do because when I run my hands across it, if I feel sharp edges, like that's a little sharp, <clears throat> I cut that off. But you know, any you know, anything constantly rubbing, especially a door with it swinging back and forth, it tends to slide back and forth. You know, it'll start making a mark on someone's white door. So I don't want my leaf to do that. But this is not something you have to do because that's an added expense, right? So if you don't want to add that expense to your wreath making, you don't have to. All right, let's move this out the way. So now we have our sign, right? We have the position of our sign, and it's right where we want it. Now, where I want to put my bow is diagonally where this sign is. So this is where I want to put my bow, okay? So that's where I'm going to place my bow at. That's going to be the next thing we do is we're going to do the bow. We're going to do the bow. So we're going to move this over to the side. And we're going to bring out our easy bow maker. I love using the easy bow maker to make my bows. Um, I just It just simplifies making the bow. It just makes it so much easier. It holds the ribbon for you. So you don't have to worry about either your hand cramping or getting tired. Or maybe like my grandson running down here and making me have to do it all over again. Once I show you this, you'll see, oh yeah, well it holds the ribbon, so it's a great, it's a great tool to have. How I use it is I take a zip tie, take a zip tie, it's kind of hard to see. Um, that's a zip tie, I'm putting it on the white paper so you can see the zip tie. And it has like a little notch here at the top, and this is how you put it in like this. So we're going to have the zip tie facing down. We're going to have this notch facing down, okay? Facing down on the easy bow maker. So you have that notch facing down, so it's facing away from you. Then I'm going to take a brown Chanel stem. And I'm going to put it across in between the two tall sticks. I'm laying it right across just like that. Now... I know what size loop I want to make. Normally with my grapevines, I go to like a six inch loop. So I'm going to start with a six inch loop. I don't know if I want to start with the bottom tan. Yeah. So we'll start with the tan. So how are you guys doing? How is your weekend going so far? I know my Saturday was busy. I don't know about you guys, but my Saturday was busy. So this Saturday has been busy and it's not ending yet. So you put your, your ribbon here. You go over to your six inch mark, which is right there. I give it a twist in between. You go over to this six inch mark. And what I do with my bows is I actually make it is put it diagonally so this top bow is facing this way the bottom bow is facing this way this top end is facing this way and this end will be facing this way okay i thought i had my scissors up here i don't okay hold on stand by let me get my scissors stand by Where did my scissors go? That is odd. And my brother just took the bag that got my other scissors in it. Hold on one second. Stand by. Stand by.
I am so sorry, you guys. Of course, my daughter came down here and moved stuff where it wasn't supposed to be. So, I'm back. Okay, sorry, guys. And we cut this in here, and we moved this. We're just going to do one uh, loop, two loops, rather, of each ribbon. So I'm thinking what color I'm going to do next. I think I'm going to go with this beautiful teal color. Let me just put that there. I want my tails to be about 10 inches. And what I do is since we have this tail here, this tail here, this bow here, and this bow here, or loop, right? Do my 10. And I'm just using my mat here on the table. Now, I want to have, I'm going to go the opposite direction. Like this, the direction of this loop, this is where I'm going to put my tail. And then when I do this loop or this bow, right, this loop, I'm going in a little shorter, maybe an inch and a half in from the actual from the first one you see how this is a little shorter than the first one right so i'm going in like a little shorter it's like maybe half an inch and see what happens is i take once i see the placement this is the size that i want That's the size bow I want, right? And then I take this loop and I go up. And I take this loop or bow. I gotta see, gotta size it to this one. Bring it down some, because I don't want the same size. I bring it down some. And I place this one here. Then I take this tail and bring it down here. I think I'm going to go with this beautiful rust color. Next. And this ribbon, I didn't tell you guys where I got my ribbon from. This ribbon right here came from Sam's Club. No, yeah, Sam's Club. Make it small. This is Sam's Club. This was for my wholesaler. So, not sure if you probably can find it online, maybe. But this came from my wholesaler. This um came. This one came, I think, from Craft Outlet. This pretty one here came from Craft Outlet. And this beautiful rust ribbon came from Dollar Tree. All right, so don't sleep on Dollar Tree. They have some pretty nice ribbon. You know? So it'd be really, really nice. So this one, of course, when we come in, we want it to be a little shorter than the last loop or bow, right? So we pull it out, we take it up to that last loop that we made or bow that we made. We want it in a little smaller. That's a little smaller. We give it a little twist. We come down to this one, we make it a little smaller, right? And we take this, the tail, and we put it up to the top and we give it a snip. Put your hand on, be careful. And I'm just rolling it back up. Like I said, we have a last minute event tomorrow at Bridge Mill and Bridge Mill Subdivision, which is 1200 Bridge Mill Avenue. Tomorrow between 12 and 6 p.m. It was very last minute. We just got the email yesterday saying that we were approved. I was approved to be there. They show me my spot. Um, so I will be there tomorrow. Uh, I'm just trying to do some last minute reefs uh, for you guys. So that's why I'm coming on with this grapevine, showing you guys how to do this quick and easy grapevine reef. So if you're thinking about doing this as a business, these are quick reefs that you can do, right? 
these are quick wreaths that you can do and that you can sell so remember we're going to do the tail opposite the, of our bow right or our loop and remember we want now we want this loop to be a little smaller than the last one so we come in it's a little smaller we give this a twist you see what this one is we want to make this one a little smaller and then we want this tail to come here. We want this loop to go up here, right? So we want this loop to come here. So then we want this loop on this end. We want this loop on this end. And we want this tail to shoot down here and we give it a little snip and then we wrap it up and that's it for our bow that's it that's all we're gonna do and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna put it together let me hey guys let me know what you think about this ribbon these ribbons that I'm using I mean I really love the colors in that one right there I really love this teal and this burnt orange y'all give me a second yes it's still Big three squares, right? The big three. No, we're gonna put them in last. I'm putting them behind. Oh, the C. Yeah. yeah, we got the three. No, we got the three big bases and the two small bases because I, I made another little one okay. to go along one of the other side, the one of the sides of the tent. Okay. Like I said, we're packing up for tomorrow. So my daughter's packing up the truck while I'm doing videos with you guys making wreaths, okay? We're trying to get it done. We're trying, like I said, this was last minute. So we didn't have too much time to prepare. So now we have our bow, right? Now we got to get our bow off the easy bow maker, right? This is how you do it. Remember that zip tie at the bottom? You bring up that zip tie. And you cinch it up, but you don't cinch it all the way, just enough to hold it. And then you just pick your bow up off the easy bow maker. Look at that. It's together. But what you want to do, you see how it's off? It's not in the middle. The exact middle is over to the side. So you just hold it, your ribbon. I, I like to turn it upside down. Let me turn it upside down. And I slide it over to the middle. And the reason why I turn it upside down because then I can pull my Chanel stem to the back. And I can kind of push my ribbon down to make sure I got a good hold. All right? So now I just want placement of my, my bows right now. Before I cinch it really tight, I'm just going to do placement of my bows. Because before you cinch it real tight, you want to make sure you got good placement of your bows. right so you got that one there you got this one up here this one down here and then look at your bows and see if they look even now if they don't look even what you can do and in fact it doesn't look even what you can do see because i haven't cinched it all the way you can I always like to do this sometimes pick it up and you'll see I see seem like the loops on this side is a little longer than this side and sometimes that happens doesn't happen often but sometimes it happens. and what you can do is you can just take your ribbon hold it in one hand and slide this middle zip tie over just a little bit so now when you pick it up they look like they're more even you still haven't cinched it down tight all the way, which that's a good thing, right? That's why you don't do that. You don't cinch it down tight all the way just yet because you want to be able to move it around if you need to move it around. I'm going to be able to bring this down here at this end. There's this cream loop cream loop here and see there you go now we have everything where we want it let me get my chanel stem back here 
Now we are going to cinch it tight. So I'm just going to hold my Chanel stamp and push my ribbon forward. And you see how it closed it up? Made it real nice. It just closed it up on me. And we got a beautiful bow. Let this get turned. Okay, there you go. And we got a beautiful bow. Now we're going to cut these ends, these tails a little shorter. But there's your bow. So now we're done with the easy bow maker. We'll bring your grapevine back. And remember, we want to put the bow diagonally of that corner, right? So we're going to put it up in that, that corner up here. And we're going to use, we're going to pull this back out again, okay, to get your Chanel stems, which is back here, the Chanel stems through your grapevine. So we're going to cut off this end. We're going to make sure it's nice and tight. We're going to cut off the uh, zip tie, the excess zip tie. You'll find placement where you want the bow to go. This is the area where I want it to go. I put one Chanel stem in through one of the loops on the little needle here. Pull it through and you see how easy it is it comes through. See that? Real simple. And then we get the other one. Do the same thing. Give it a little bend at the end. Find placement where you want it to go. And this is where I want it to come through. I don't know if you can see that. And look at that. It comes right through like butter eye. I love using that pen. And let me tell you, in the beginning, I was not using that pen. And let me tell you, trying to fish the Chanel stems through is a pain. So now you just give it a little pull and a good twist. Don't worry about flattening your bow. You're going to fluff your bow 15 million times before you're done, okay? Trust me. Even when I know my bow is fine, I'm still fluffing it. I cut off that Chanel, the rest of the excess Chanel, and then I stick it back in to the bottom. Now, why am I fluffing now? I Because I'm just fluffing, and I shouldn't be because I'm about to put those picks in and it's gonna get you know twisted up again all right so here we go with our picks now i've twisted my picks because that's how it's gonna lay on your grapevine you want it to have the curve right of the grapevine so i've already done that where it's curved for the grapevine i'm just going to just place it here right now so i can show you guys the placement I'm just, just laying it in and now I have not glued anything. I haven't permanently put anything in anywhere. I'm just showing you play you guys placement right now. That's all I'm doing. So this is why I twist it. When you twist it, you can get it to lay like the shape, the shape of your grapevine. You know what I'm saying, right? It'll go with the shape of the grapevine. All right, so let me get this bottom one in. And what we do is I only leave like maybe two or three inches. Let me cut the tag off. That would be good. Two or three inches, maybe four of the stem. And I find placement where I want it first. I don't glue it first. I stick this in first, fiddle with it, make sure it's where I want it first before I glue it down. Okay, so make sure you do that. Okay, make sure you do that. Find good placement for it. Get your bow all around it. Can move these picks around right it's got wire in these picks so you move it where you want it now this pick is 
It's a little stiff. That's okay. Just move it where you want it. It has wire. It's just real stiff wire, which is good. Now, what I like to do is I like to go maybe halfway down in my pick. And I like to take like a Chanel uh, a zip tie. And like tie it down to the grapevine. Once I get my placement, and this is my placement, I'm liking it. Be careful with these little things because these little things, they break off. So you got to be careful with them. So I'm liking this placement. And I'm going to take a zip tie. And I'm going to get a little bit of the couple of the, the top pieces of the grapevine. I'm going to go underneath. And I just got my hand there where I can kind of grip it. Now, if it doesn't work, remember, use your needle. You bend it just like you did the Chanel stem. Use your needle. And then you can see exactly where that needle comes out at. And I just broke it, which is not a good thing. So I'm going to have to use my fingers. I have another one, but it's over there. It's fine. We're going to get it done. I did this a lot of times without that needle, so I know how to get it done. So you just take that group, that grapevine, those grapevines that you found. Give it a good one, two little tie down. And this holds it down more secure as well. So you know it's not going to go anywhere. Right? We're just going to move our flowers around. We're going to fill this in. Make this look beautiful. Remember, this pick is, is not glued in. I'm just doing placement right now. It's not glued in. Right? It's not glued in. But look at that. See how that looks already? Gorgeous. So let's get the second pick. I'm going to throw that out now. And I clean as I go. I'm sorry. I can't take it where it's real dirty. And it's gritty. And oh, I can't work like that. So I will be cleaning and cleaning and cleaning. All right. So we're going to cut this in. Maybe about four or five inches. And we're going to take this and we're going to find a spot and fit it in. And sometimes you cut the stem, like I may cut the stem too long, right? And I have to go in and I have to cut it shorter. Sometimes I have to do that. Sometimes it just works out that way. And you know, these pieces are on, like these pumpkins are on wires, so you can move them around, right? So don't be afraid. You can move them around. Now I have that in, that pick in. I'm liking that placement. I'm going to find a location down here. I want to secure this. This pick to. Found this spot right here. I'm going to take my zip tie. And go through and catch it with my finger. It's hard for me to show you this. It's just you got to feel your way. It's hard to see this part. And we just cut off the excess zip tie. And our pick is attached. Look at that. We haven't glued nothing in yet. Remember. So if we felt like we needed to take something out and change something and do something over, guess what? We could do it, right? I don't know why I'm doing this upside down. But look at that. 
Look at that. That's all I say. When I tell you this is an easy wreath, it's an easy wreath. It's not the cheapest wreath, but it is an easy wreath you can do. So we are done. I mean, how easy is that? We're going to cut these ends. Give them a dovetail cut. And this is what I mean by dovetail. Where you put the two ends together. You fold it over. And you just cut on the angle. And it gives you a dovetail. And I'm going to go with a little longer at the bottom. And they don't have to be the same size. You know. Just, just play around with it. You know. See what looks good to you. I'm just going to go around. I'm going to dovetail these ends. I love this, this teal. This, this teal with this uh, copper or rust, you want to call it. Love it. I'm going to leave this one kind of long where it sticks out. I'm loving that. And this wreath is done. Look at that. This wreath is done. Now I'm going to hit it with some little glue. I'm going to go in this little bottom part here. I'm going to take my glue gun. Oh, forgot a tail. Okay. <clears throat> and I forgot a tag. Mm -mm -mm. I took the tag off the first one, but I didn't take a tag off the second one. <laughs> All right, I got the tag off. So now we're going to find where I put this in at, which I see it right there. And we're going to hit it with good amount of glue all down up in there to get it nice and secure. Okay. And then we'll refluff again. We're going to find where I stuck the second one over here in at, which is right there. We're going to hit this with a good amount of glue. And we are done. That's done. This is it. Let me turn this wreath around so I can see. Stand up so I can see what I'm doing here. I love the live edges of the ribbon. I'm gonna put that, I'm gonna put that pumpkin towards that end. Fluff up the inside of my bow. I'm gonna put this pumpkin on this end. Show this. Put it in here. just love this stuff because what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it where like you have it and you can do this with your ribbon where it's actually moving it looks like it's in the wind and you can just bend it any which way you want to where it looks like it's just floating and I like that and you bend it And it just looks like it's floating. And they just all look like they're floating. There's no sharp ends. It's just little gentle curls. Little gentle curls. And it looks like your ribbon is bending and blowing in the wind. Oh, little gentle curls. And when you use the wire ribbon, it's very easy to do when you're using wire ribbon. That's why you should always use wire ribbon. I do know some people that, you know, they was like, oh, I can't find wire ribbon in what I want. So I'm using this ribbon here. And then they can't accomplish movement like this with their ribbon. And that's why, because they didn't use wire ribbon. So if you want movement in your ribbon, you want to be able to place your ribbon where you want it, then you got to use wire ribbon. 
Yes, is it more expensive? Yes. But look at this look. You want that look. Look at that. That's absolutely gorgeous. It took me a little longer because I had to go chase down my scissors. <laughs> but thank you guys for hanging in there with me. Please let me know how you like it. Um, when you come on, please comment, say hi, let me know where you're checking in from. Uh, let me know if you do Grapevine Reeves. If you have done Grapevine Reeves, do you like doing Grapevine Reeves? I love it because they can be very simple to do and a very elegant look can come from it. It's just gorgeous. This was just a Grapevine Asan, two picks and a bow. That's all that took to make this wreath look as beautiful as it is. And here it is. Now, all I'm going to do after this is I'm going to put a little hook on the back and I'm going to cover the back of the grapevine with some brown felt. And that's it. This is going to be ready to go. I'm not going to hold you guys for that. It's just me covering the back of felt and putting on the sign. But, hey, thank you guys for hanging in with hanging in there with me. Um, starting to get a little tired now. But I have a long way to go. I still got several hours before I can go to bed because I have a whole bunch more to do. But you guys, let me know in a comment what you think about this. Definitely, please, um, this will be uh, saved and put on my YouTube channel. So if you can go to my YouTube channel, subscribe to my YouTube channel, I greatly appreciate it. I really need to bring up my followers on my YouTube channel so you guys can go there. Uh, obviously, I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. I'm on TikTok. I'm also on Pinterest, so you guys can check me out anywhere. But definitely go over to my YouTube and subscribe to my YouTube channel. That way my girls can go on YouTube. I greatly appreciate it. Watch my videos. So until we meet again, bye. Didn't hit the stop. <laughs>